With prominent figures on the right embracing and parroting the dangerous white nationalist conspiracy theory known as the Great Replacement, it's worth noting that in addition to being deeply racist, bigoted, and dehumanizing, it's also incredibly stupid. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. <laughs> You might remember that throughout his presidency, Donald Trump tried to fan the flames of a racist conspiracy theory by claiming the Democrats were somehow organizing caravans of migrants to cross the southern border for their own political benefit and even handing out cash to incentivize people to come to the U.S. This is an invasion. I was badly criticized for using the word invasion. It's an invasion. People hate the word invasion, but that's what it is. It's an invasion of drugs and criminals and people. Mexico should step up and stop this onslaught, this invasion into our country. The Democrats want to invite caravan after caravan of illegal aliens into our country. A large group of people, they call it a caravan. Do you know how the caravan started? Does everybody know what this means? I think the Democrats had something to do with it. What is he doing? Is that like a game of racist charades? Is he, is he dealing invisible cards? Which is something I bet he tried as his casinos before they went bankrupt. And that's a, a six for you, a six for you. And would you look at that? It's another blackjack for the dealer. <laughs> to no one's surprise, the racist caravan hysteria had a habit of conveniently popping up during election cycles and then quietly receding when the elections were over because it was obviously just a cynical tool to scare people and stir up Trump's base. And as the New York Times reported in 2018, it clearly had an effect on Trump's voters. As the Times put it, Trump's dystopian imagery has clearly left an impression with some, including a 75-year-old Republican in northern Minnesota who said she was afraid that migrant gangs could take over people's summer lake houses in the state. What's to stop them? We have a lot of people who live on lakes in the summer and winter someplace else. When they come back in the spring, their house would be occupied. Now, obviously that's insane. If we've learned anything from movies, it's that if you have a lake house, you don't have to be worried about immigrants. You have to be worried about Jason, you guys. The more you focus on immigrants, the easier it gets for Jason. You're pointing your binoculars toward the southern border. Meanwhile, Jason's just licking his lips strolling into your tool shed, waiting for night to fall. <laughs> Picking out one of your tools. <laughs> now, it should be easy for a healthy political party and a healthy political system to condemn white nationalism, as well as the dangerous and deeply racist replacement theory that comes with it. And yet, of course, there are prominent figures on the right who insist, while spreading it themselves, that it doesn't even exist. Where exactly is all this criminal white supremacy, this right-wing domestic terrorism that poses, quote, the most lethal terrorist threat in the homeland? Where is it? Well, it, of course, it doesn't exist. If you were to assemble a list, a hierarchy of concerns, of problems this country faces, where would white supremacy be on the list? Right up there with Russia, probably. It's actually not a real problem in America. The combined membership of every white supremacist organization in this country would they be able to fit inside a college football stadium? White supremacy, that's the problem. This is a hoax. First of all, you don't have to be a card-carrying member of a white supremacist organization to be a white supremacist. It's not Costco. You can be a white supremacist without being an official member, the same way you can watch movies without having a Blockbuster card. Although, personally, I give anything for Blockbuster to come back. No more sitting in front of the Netflix home screen, scrolling for something to watch. Back home, when we had Blockbuster, I just waited for mom to get back from work and say, I got fried green tomatoes, and then, You'd say, I don't think I'm gonna like it, Mom. And then your dad would say, well, then you can go stare at the wall. So you'd watch it. <laughs> and you know what? I did like it. I liked it a lot. Thanks, Blockbuster. Anyway, can we go back to this part? The combined membership of every white supremacist organization in this country would be able to fit inside a college football stadium? First of all, a college football stadium could fit like 100,000 people, which is a ton of people. If I told you, don't worry, I rounded up all the white supremacists and walked you into here, I don't think your reaction would be, you. <laughs> Have you ever watched a college football game or you just stand outside the glass at the country club watching your rich pals play squash with that look on your face like you just got to earth and you're trying to understand human behavior? Second, why don't you just do some journalism and find out? It's easy to just ask open-ended questions without answering them. Anyone can do that. This dude's like a search engine that just answers your questions with a series of more questions. He's don't ask Jeeves. How many ounces are in a cup? I have a question for you. How big is the cup? And why 
Are the cups all different sizes? Why is the government trying to control you by telling you how many ounces you're allowed to have in one cup? And if you're only allowed to have eight ounces in a cup, then where are all the other ounces going? Are they being stolen by a secret cabal of woke elites who are hoarding all the ounces for themselves while threatening to cancel you for daring to question their authority? And when you ask the barista at Starbucks to pour 1,000 ounces of coffee into your cup, well, they say that's not possible. And when you climb over the counter and claim it's your constitutional right to take as many biscotti as you want, will they have you arrested by the thought police and put you in a muzzle like Hannibal Lecter to shut you up because you're being, quote, annoying as <laughs> Will that happen to you just like it happened to me yesterday? But of course, he wants to pretend, he wants to pretend it's not a problem because he's also openly and repeatedly promoted replacement theory on his show. An unrelenting stream of immigration, but why? Well, Joe Biden just said it to change the racial mix of the country. That's the reason, to reduce the political power of people whose ancestors lived here and dramatically increase the proportion of Americans newly arrived from the third world. In political terms, this policy is called the Great Replacement, the replacement of legacy Americans with more obedient people from faraway countries. Now, I know that the left and all the little gatekeepers on Twitter become literally hysterical if you use the term replacement, if you suggest that the Democratic Party is trying to replace the current electorate, the voters now casting ballots, mm. with new people, more obedient voters from the third world. But they become hysterical because that's, that's what's happening, actually. Let's just say it. That's mm. true. In other words, you're being replaced, and there's nothing you can do about it. So shut up! <laughs> Truly a haunting laugh. I love the audacity of calling people on the left literally hysterical and then ending one of your rants with an insane terror giggle. Second and more important, the so-called replacement theory is obviously racist, dangerous, and dehumanizing. But on top of everything else, it's also incredibly stupid. I mean, just think about it for like half a second. No one's being replaced. There's no capacity limit here. It's not like there's a bouncer who only lets two in when two leave. And yet, that same bouncer somehow keeps letting in girls and cool dudes, even though you and your friend Todd have been to the front of the line for like half an hour. <laughs> so finally, you say, hey, man, you either let us in or we're going to FGT. And he says, what does FGT mean? And you say, Go home and watch Fried Green Tomatoes. And he's like, oh, man. And now I'm never letting you in. Again, though, just think about how breathtakingly dumb the logic here is. No one gets replaced when another person enters the country. The government doesn't come knocking on your door and say, hey, someone just crossed the border, so now you have to move to a different country. We're super sorry. Pack your shit up. You're moving to Sweden. Here's a troll and a pair of clogs. Second. <laughs> Just think about how dumb and dehumanizing it is to call migrants who are fleeing poverty and violence and coming here to seek a better life obedient. They're doing one of the most difficult things a human being can do, uprooting themselves and their families, leaving their homes and making a dangerous trek to a foreign country. And they're doing it at great personal cost in the hopes of seeking a better life. For this theory to make any sense at all, you'd have to believe that all those people are just sitting at home waiting for a call from the Democratic National Committee telling them it's time to join the caravan and make the trek toward America. All right, everybody. Pack up your stuff. I just got the call from Joe Biden. We're replacing the Hendersons, and good news, we're getting their Blockbuster membership. <laughs> Prominent figures on the right have been parroting this depraved and deeply racist ideology for years now. And on top of being bigoted, dehumanizing, and dangerous, it's also just breathtakingly dumb. It's so dumb, even they can't actually explain the logic. They just toss out racist bull and say, Does everybody know what this means? This has been A Closer Look. God's Love We Deliver cooks and brings over 2 million meals a year to men, women, and children living with HIV, AIDS, cancer, and other serious illnesses, and they need your help now more than ever. If you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button. Stay safe, get vaccinated. We love you.